guys, today I'm going to be giving you a tour of our vegetable garden. For reference, we are located in Virginia, zone 7A, and our garden is a mix of raised beds and in-ground gardens. There's definitely a lot more to show you this month since we have passed our estimated last frost date. In this first bed here, we have some kale. This is Russian red kale and it's been here for about a month or so. And it's just now getting to the point where you can harvest it for baby greens, but we're going to let them get a little bigger so we can harvest some bigger leaves. Next to that, we started putting in most of our pepper plants. I've covered all the different varieties that were growing in a previous video where I was potting them up, so I won't go too much into detail this week. We've had these in here for about a week now and they're doing really well. On the other side of the bed, we actually still have a lot of cool weather greens, mostly collards here. And these are not going to stay throughout the summer, so what we've done is we've just popped in our pepper plants in between all of the different collards and eventually the collards are going to get taken out and then it will just be the pepper plants here. And once we take those greens out, we're also going to set up some tomato cages or stakes for our pepper plants. But we just wanted to maximize our space and have these crops kind of overlap so that we don't have to wait for one crop to be completely done before putting in the next one. In our next bed, we have six eggplants. These are all Asian eggplants. Ideally, we really would have wanted to wait a few more weeks to put these into our beds because our nights are still sometimes a little bit cooler. But these eggplants were just getting so big that I didn't want them to suffer being in a Hot for too long so we just stuck them in. Since these were getting so big they started to put out some flowers that I'm going to be trimming off. These are newly transplanted and we want to make sure that the plant is putting a lot of energy into developing its root system rather than trying to produce fruit right now. And these flowers and stems and leaves of the eggplants are seriously so crazy. Look at all of those spikes and thorns on them so you really have to be careful when you're dealing with these plants. And by the way, I'm going to be doing the same thing with most of the plants that we're newly transplanting with those flowers and just popping those off if there are any early producing ones. We also have these first couple of beds set up so that we can cover them with garden fabric. And for the most part, I really have just been keeping these plants covered unless it gets really hot during the day, in which case I'll open it up for a little bit. This just helps retain a little bit of heat in the evenings when it's a little bit cooler, which I think is really helpful for these plants. And also specifically for the eggplants, we have a lot of flea beetles in our area and last year our plants really suffered. So this is just a layer of protection to keep any of those bugs off as well. Next to the eggplant bed, we have a bunch of different little things in this bed. We have a couple of Napa cabbage seedlings. They're starting to grow pretty quickly now, but they have been getting really attacked by slugs. We have these beer traps scattered around our garden, but they don't really seem to be working. So if you see these orange pill bottles around, that's what they are. Next to that, we have a line of daikon radishes. This is a Japanese radish, and this is actually usually grown in the fall, but I wanted to give it a try and grow it in the spring because I really like this type of radish. And those have a little bit of slug damage as well, but they've been holding up pretty well, so hopefully we'll get a harvest of those. Then we have a few lettuce plants and then a whole bunch of different kinds of root crops. We have golden beets, red beets, turnips, and also some carrots. The carrots have been hit pretty hard by those slugs, but we do have a few survivors, so hopefully we'll get at least a small harvest of these. I'm pretty happy with the germination on these carrots. We tried to grow these in the fall, but it was really hard to keep the soil moist during the summer, so I think this is definitely a good crop to try in the spring. The next raised bed on this side has our A-frame trellis on half of it and we have snow peas growing up the two sides and they've just started to get tall enough to cling to the chicken wire on our trellis which is really exciting and they're growing really quickly now that we're getting a little more rain and our days are getting longer. In the space underneath we're growing spinach and arugula. And those are just about getting to the point where we can start harvesting them small for baby greens and salads. And having them under this trellis should keep them a little more shaded and protected as the spring gets a little bit warmer. So that should prolong the harvest for us just a little bit. At the other end of this bed, we have four more Napa cabbage plants. You can see these bottom leaves are really getting attacked in. And we've just been going around, especially in the evenings when the slugs come out, and checking on the undersides of the leaves and picking them off. But it's pretty tedious, so if you have any suggestions for how to deal with slugs, then please let me know in the comments down below. At the very end of the bed, we have a dahlia 
azalea plant and a row of cilantro. Cilantro is one of those plants that really does not like the heat and goes to seed really quickly. So if you haven't sown yours yet, it's probably time to do it now while it's still really cool out. Moving on to the other side of the raised bed garden, we have this one longer bed that's still pretty empty for now. So we'll skip that and go to the next bed. And this one is filled with onions, leeks, and radishes. It's kind of hard to tell because these plants are really skinny, but these leeks and onions have really been growing really well and just getting stronger by the day. And we've interplanted these with radishes, and these radishes have already started to form their bulbs, so they're going to be ready to pick in just a couple of weeks. And by the time those are gone, the onions will be getting bigger and taking up more of this bed. And we'll do this a lot with a lot of crops in the spring because radishes grow so quickly during that time. It's just a really good way to get double use out of your space. The next bed has some tomato plants. These are a hybrid determinate variety from Johnny's and we have only six of them. We wanted to leave plenty of space because since this is a determinate variety, we're not going to be really pruning it. And this is just going to get really big and bushy. Um, but I don't think it's going to get very tall, which is why I wanted it in this raised bed. And we've interplanted those in between with onions, and we've also scattered some nasturtiums around as well. The nasturtiums are there kind of just to be pretty, but they also attract aphids to them, so it's a good trap plant to have around your vegetables. We've left half of the next bed empty. We're going to be moving our A-frame trellis here for cucumbers once the peas are done producing. And then on the other side, we do have some stuff going on. First, we have a line of dill. This is a really fun variety that is good for cut flowers because it creates these really big pads of flowers that are kind of like fireworks. Next to that, we have four celery seedlings. These are really slow growing plants. We started these indoors probably back in like February and then we planted them out a few weeks ago and they're still pretty small but they are looking healthy and they're not minding the cooler spring temperatures at all. The last couple of rows are calendula flowers. These are another cold hardy crop and you can grow these for the flowers. We like to harvest them for a lot of our skincare products. The butterflies really love these flowers and they're also a really good trap crop for aphids. Our last few beds in the center of our garden are smaller beds that we have some blueberry plants in. We have some older ones that have been flowering already, as you can see here. And around those blueberry plants, we also have some newer strawberry plants, but they don't seem like they have any flowers on those right now. But hopefully we get some good blueberries this year. So that's the end of our raised bed garden. And then in this back area, we have an in-ground garden that's about the same size as all of our raised beds. And we like to put a lot of our more production crops here. So here we have a row of potatoes. These are the ones that we planted up in another video. And now they're all starting to break surface on the ground and you can start seeing those potato leaves. After that video, we also got our hands on a couple more varieties of potatoes and planted those. And those are also coming up really nicely. So we're gonna wait for these to get a few more inches higher and then we're going to cover them up with the dirt that we have from digging out the trench. The next row is filled with tomatoes, which we just planted out a couple of days ago. At the very front, I popped in a dahlia plant just so that there's something pretty to look at when we look at this from our house. And then I'll just quickly show you all the tags for the tomatoes we have since they kind of just all look the same. A lot of our varieties this year are from Johnny Seeds and we wanted to concentrate a little bit more on production tomatoes and not as many heirloom tomatoes. Last year we grew a lot of heirlooms and we just didn't really have the volume that we wanted to be able to preserve a lot of sauces and diced tomatoes for the year. So this year hopefully we can really ramp up that production. These tomatoes are all indeterminate so they're going to be pruned either to a single stem or to two stems unlike the determinate varieties that we have in our raised bed. They're spaced about 12 inches apart and then we've also popped in some basil plants in between all of these tomatoes as well. We always companion plant our tomatoes with either basil or marigolds because as the tomatoes are trellised vertically, these smaller plants are really good to take up more of that space down near the ground and it helps to shade out any weeds as well. We also have a few tomatillo plants at the end of this row and these are putting off flowers so I'm just going to pop those off. And we really like tomatillos for salsa verde but we also just like to eat them fresh. They're really nice and crisp and they have a very mild sweet flavor. 
The row next to that is our asparagus row and we are so excited because it has just started producing. Every day we go and check and see all of the little shoots popping out of the ground. This asparagus bed was put in place by the previous owner of the house so it's been a few years by now so we're just harvesting any stalk that's a good size to eat. Any of the skinnier ones we're leaving to just grow into its fronds. So here's a super skinny one you can see and it's already starting to leaf out. So far we've already harvested a few bunches and they're so sweet and tender and it looks like we're going to have a lot more to harvest soon. So panning over to the other side of this back garden, in the front we have a few sprouting broccoli plants and these have really started putting on a lot of sprouts. We've been coming out and harvesting probably like every two days and getting a good meal's worth. They're a little emptier today since I harvested them yesterday, but they're producing a lot of food. We really love this plant and are definitely going to grow it again next fall. Then we have an empty bed and then the next one is filled with more onions and radishes. These are onions that we actually got as sets and the ones in our raised bed are from seed. So it'll be interesting to see the difference between these two and again we've interplanted those with radishes. These were planted one or two weeks after the ones in our raised bed so it's kind of nice just to have a succession of radishes to pick throughout the season. Last but not least, we have our two rows of garlic, which are looking so glorious. The soft neck in particular on the right side has really grown since the last garden tour and it just looks really green and bushy and healthy. And the stalks are also getting really thick, so hopefully we are getting some good bulb growth underneath the ground. That's pretty much it for our main garden area, but we do have a few perennial food plants that we put in around our yard that I just wanted to quickly show you. We have some raspberries that we put in this spring. These ones are yellow raspberries and they're starting to put on a lot of new growth. It's pretty crazy because when we planted it, there's just that like one dead looking stick in the ground and then it sends off all of these shoots coming from the base of the plant and they're looking really good and healthy. Our second variety is a red raspberry called Encore and we got these plants from Stark Bros. We also have a few new fruit trees. This first one is an apple tree which is already putting off flowers. Some people say that you should take off the flowers the first year but I'm not really sure if we're going to do that. We haven't decided yet. We have another apple tree which looks pretty silly because it's just this one stick but it has so many new leaves coming off of it. And then this last one is a peach tree, which also looks really good. So we're pretty excited to see how those develop. So that brings us to the end of April's garden tour. I hope you guys enjoyed this and we'll see you again next time.